We will now look more closely at the regulating services. Gas regulation is the regulation of the chemical composition of the atmosphere and oceans. This includes the absorption and release of oxygen and the sequestration and storage of carbon dioxide. Oceans, for example, are effective carbon traps that help alleviate the effects of increasing amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They represent the largest active carbon sink on Earth and are believed to take up to a third of the carbon dioxide that is emitted by humans worldwide. Climate regulation is the regulation of local to global climate processes, that is, the direct influence of land cover on temperature, precipitation, wind, and humidity. Disturbance regulation is the role that ecosystems play in reducing environmental fluctuations and disturbances. Protection from storm surge, hurricanes, and floods are good examples of this service. In this picture, we see a vegetated dune. If a hurricane were to hit this coast, the dune would play a crucial role in reducing the damaging power of water surge, waves, and strong winds. Biological regulation is the interaction of species that affects the control of pests and diseases and the reduction of crop damage. A common disruption to this service is the introduction of invasive species that disrupt the balance of native species interactions. In the Gulf of Mexico, for example, lionfish have been disrupting the balance of native species interactions. As non-native species, lionfish have no predators and are known to eat large amounts of native crustaceans and fish. Lionfish have been found to reduce average net juvenile fish recruitment by 79%. Thus, it is important to maintain the provision of this service by controlling the introduction of invasive species. Water regulation is the flow of water across the planet's surface, including the variation of the drought flood cycle and purification of water. Soil retention information and erosion control is the ecosystem's role in the formation, regeneration and retention of soil and in the reduction of erosion. This service includes the prevention of soil loss by wind and runoff. In these pictures, we see mangroves and oyster reefs, both very effective in reducing shoreline erosion by dissipating wave energy and stabilizing sediments. Waste regulation is the role of nature in the removal and breakdown of non-nutrient compounds and materials. For example, in these pictures, we see marshes, which remove significant amount of pollutants from rain, rivers, terrestrial runoff and groundwater. As illustrated in the diagram, as water travels through a marsh, it slows down due to the friction provided by marsh plants, allowing for sediments that are suspended in the water to be deposited on the marsh surface, facilitating pollutant uptake by the marsh and leading to cleaner water. Nutrient regulation is the role of nature in maintaining major nutrients within acceptable limits. Oysters, for example, filter large amounts of organic matter from the water column via the nitrification and the absorption of nutrients into their tissues and shells. This leads to a more balanced level of nutrients and improved water quality. On the other hand, as shown in the diagram on the left, an excessive amount of nutrients can stimulate an overgrowth of algae, which then sinks and decomposes in the water. This process consumes oxygen and diminishes the supply available to healthy marine life. This is commonly referred to as the dead zone because most marine life either dies or leaves the area. Nutrient regulation is therefore crucial for healthy marine life.